working with advanced redux concepts. In this section, we're going to look at using advanced reducers, configuring redux within your application, the rules of redux, using thunks to dispatch asynchronous actions, and knowing your selectors. Using advanced reducers. In this video, we're going to look at some of the more advanced reducer concepts. OK, so we looked at a really basic reducer in the last video. And what I'm going to show you now is the sorts of patterns that you might use in reducers. There are a bunch, and a lot of them are quite common, and you'll find they come up quite regularly. I am going to do this in pseudocode. Well, not pseudocode, but in real code. I'm just going to kind of show you some of the patterns. I'm not going to run all of the code, because in this project, it perhaps doesn't make sense to use them all. I'm just going to run you through some of the different things that might happen. So probably the first one I can think of that's pretty common is something like, say we want to delete a post. So if you wanted to delete a post, let's say that you've got some sort of post ID has come in. So you've got action.payload and you know the one you want to get rid of, right? So you've got the ID. So you obviously want to, you always want to keep your state. There's like a trend here. Always want to spread your state back in pretty much in almost every single case. And then it's a question of, well, we want to delete a post and we know the post ID. What we sort of want to do is find the post that we want to get rid of and return some posts, but without that one. Now, one thing that's really cool is if you are using the underscore library, or lodash rather, is what I normally use in most of my projects, most lodash functions, unless they say otherwise, and some of them do say otherwise, they return a new collection. So they don't modify data. So they don't break the rules that we talked about before. So that's really cool. So you could probably hear say something like, you know, reject state dot post. And then you say the one you want to reject. So you might say like the post where, I don't know, post ID is equal to post ID or something like that. And this will clone, so reject internally, clones posts. It doesn't actually modify posts. There'll be another function which does actually modify posts, but we obviously don't want to use that one. And then this will return all of these, but minus this one. That's one kind of pattern. Probably the most interesting pattern is to delete, well, no, probably to update something in position. That's quite hard. Uh, so maybe you say update posts, and as part of that, you would get the, like, I don't know, the post ID, the one you're updating, and the new post, you know, what you're changing it to. So you got both these things in the payload. So how do you do this one? So again, you always want to keep the existing state and then probably modify it. And now we'll say, well, we want the post. So now what you want to do is, let's say you want to keep them in the same order as well. So this is actually pretty tricky. So what I would normally say is like, use something like, something like lodash. I think there's a function called find index and state.post, something like this. And then you would say post arrow post ID is equal to post ID. So this will find you the index of that post. Then what you can say is state.post.slice zero to post index. And then here we're going to update. So we're going to put in the new post. And then here we're going to say state.post.slice post index plus one. And that is too big to fill on the screen. So let me just cool. So to go back one, we're saying post is going to be the posts up until the index, then we're going to put in the new post, then we're going to keep the rest. Something like this, roughly. Yeah, I'm just checking that. Yeah, that's correct. So this is everything up until but not including the one that we're replacing. This is everything afterwards. Oh, I've messed it up. Look, here we go. You need to spread these in, obviously. So this is saying, okay, copy in everything up until but not including the one that we cared about. This is saying, copy in everything after the one we cared about. And so that leaves a gap in the middle where the one that we cared about was. And then we say, okay, we'll just replace that with the new version. So this replaces, you know, if you've got a list of like, I don't know, like, you know, post one, post two, post three, then this would like maybe find the middle one, still put this in and still put that in. Okay to use slice because it doesn't mutate anything. Those are probably two quite common patterns. Um, other than so like just other than that, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, here we've got an array, which is making things a little bit more tricky. Often, you'll just be taking the data and just directly replacing like it. Whilst we're here, let's talk about another thing. So we've got this initial state at the top, which I didn't really cover in the last video. So what's that? So it's kind of a convention like you don't have to do it. 
that what a lot of people do is they say, okay, what's the state that's in this reducer when I just like load up the app for the first time? So someone hits like refresh on your web page, what should be there? And that's the initial state. And then you pass it in here as a default thing. And the first time as a default parameter, so you're, so you're saying, okay, the state will be initial state if it's not set. And then when Redux calls this function for the first time, it calls it with undefined, which means that this get, takes over. So basically the first time it calls it, it will plop in your initial state for you. It's also pretty handy because if you want to reset some things, say you have like some sort of reset case, like, I don't know, like post resets all, you know, right back to the beginning, you could just say return initial state. Or maybe it's unlikely you want to do it like this, but you might more likely, you might say something like state, like I'll keep the state, but actually, you know, like my posts are going to be initial state dot post because I just want to reset that bit or something like that. That's initial state. And this pattern, like the way that these lines look is like pretty much the same everywhere. You're probably not gonna have a lot of imports in here. You should probably try not to do too much logic in here. So something I've learned from doing Redux for a couple of years now is the way I like to do it. And this is not necessarily like there's a right or wrong way, but the way I like to structure my code is I will just put things in Redux in, in my reducer. I don't try and do too much work here. I'll normally just say like, here's a thing, you know, like actions get fired. I'll normally try and store the representation of state for the app in the smallest possible store, like the, the smallest amount of data I can in the store. And I try not to duplicate any of that data. So an example of that might be, you've got five posts and a currently selected post, right? So you could represent that in a couple of ways. So for example, if I just write some code down here, you might have like, you know, posts, and then you've got like, I don't know, like, you know, like post one, post two, these are probably going to be objects in real life, but whatever, you've got like a few posts. And then you've got like the currently selected post, like, let's call it current post, it's shorter, you could do this, say like, oh, okay, it's post one and put all of this data back in here. And then when you know, if this changes, like you would then change it here. But what I think is best to do is not duplicate any of the data. So I would probably have like current post index and just say like zero, which means that like it's this one. So this is less convenient if you access your store directly, but basically you're not repeating yourself. So there's no like duplication of data. You've kept it kind of like, I would think of it as almost like in normal form or in like, you know, keeping it dry, like DR, don't repeat yourself because you're not repeating any data. And then I use selectors to often calculate some of these things. So like I would use a selector to calculate the current post, which would actually provide post three. So I like to keep the reducer state minimal, but you know, maybe not everyone's doing it that way. And it kind of depends. There might be some performance considerations that mean that you don't want to do it that way. But I think in general, try and keep your Redux states as small as possible and try not to do too much kind of like crazy stuff. I often push a lot of my logic to my selectors, but we're going to talk about that in a video in a minute. So that was a quick tour of using advanced uh, reducers, like some of the more tricky things that might come up and some of like the best practices for where to put code and how to write them.